hallelujah to the Lamb of God. A sister with a testimony on the Mount of Olives, a.k.a. Hope on a Star. I want to talk to you today about ten sins of the wicked. Ten sins of the wicked. So you can recognize when people are wicked. So in Psalm 94, it's the tenth prayer for judgment. There are three requests for judgment. And then the reasons, the ten sins of the wicked. O Lord God, Yahuwah, to whom vengeance belongeth. O Yahuwah, it says in the King James Version, God, to whom vengeance belongeth, show thyself. Lift up thyself, thou judge of the earth. Render a reward to the proud. Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? How long shall they utter and speak hard things? And all the workers of iniquity boast themselves. They break in pieces thy people, O Lord, and afflict thine heritage. They slay the widow and the stranger and murder the fatherless. Yet they say the Lord shall not see, neither shall the Lord God of Jacob, Yaqab, regard it. Father God, I just praise you and thank you for the word of God. You are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I thank you and I praise you. For you alone are worthy of our praise and honor and glory. Let this word come forth, Lord. Let it be planted in fertile ground, Father God. And let it wake up the saints, Father God. O Lord, Yahuwah, to whom vengeance belongeth. Vengeance belongs to the Lord God Almighty and only to the Lord God Almighty. So these six facts about vengeance, this is just kind of a, a little extra tidbit. Vengeance belongs to the Lord God Almighty. God avenges us and others. God promises to take vengeance against his enemies. Man is commanded. We are commanded not to avenge ourselves but to leave the matter of vengeance in the hands of the Lord God Almighty, Elohim. The day of vengeance of God is at the day of the second advent. Hellfire is eternal vengeance on all rebels. Yeah, read about that, saints. You can call yourself Christian. You can call yourself a follower of Yeshua. But if you're doing those sins on a repetitive, habitual level... Need to, need to think it. So I'm just blessing folks today, Lord, so that they'll know what wickedness truly is and what to look for. The Lord God Almighty is the only one that vengeance belongs to. And the author of this psalm said, Show thyself. I thought, wow, I like that. Yapha, Y-A-P-H, Hebrew, to shine forth. Let your... Let your light so shine that your Father in heaven will be glorified. Of course, we know that it says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. But if he shines forth and he is the light and we are the light and we're of the Father of lights, then we're going to shine. The psalmist is saying and asking, Lift yourself up, judge of the earth. Render a reward to the proud. Saints, the law of sowing and reaping in Galatians 6, 7, and 8 will never, ever fail. Whatsoever a man sows, that he shall also reap. And he asked the question, how long will the wicked, how long will they triumph? And then he lists their sins. So who are the wicked? Ten sins of the wicked. That's a double five. Hold on. It won't be that long, I promise. Just chill, Miss Olivet. Mount of Olives. The only interesting thing about this is that the pulpit moves and you have to go with the you're one with the pulpit. Good girl. You are such a good girl. She's like, fine, as long as you sit there, I don't want to run around anyhow. I don't know about y'all, but this is an amazing pulpit. My Mount of Olives. So what are the ten sins of the wicked? Number one, pride.
pride. Pride caused Lucifer to fall as lightning from heaven. Pride. How about uttering hard things? That means you're cursing and you're speaking ugly things, demonic things, things that tear others down, gossip, backbiting, backstabbing, uttering hard things. That's number two. Make it plain, saints. If you're full of pride, you're probably going to be uttering, speaking out of the abundance of your heart. Your mouth is going to speak. So when you listen to somebody, you're going to know if they're wicked or not. Just what comes out of their face. Listen to the pie, listen to what comes out of the pie hole, saints. Because if you godly and you say Yeshua Hamashiach, if you say Jesus Christ is my Lord, then you are not going to be uttering hard things. How about working iniquity? What is iniquity? Iniqui iniquity is the depth of sin. Uh, you know them by their fruit. What is what kind of fruit do they produce? No, oh, well they're doing great works and they're going to church and they're this and then they're that and then they're the other end. Uh, workers of iniquity, Jesus said, after they asked him, Lord, wait a minute, didn't we cast devils out in your name? Didn't we feed the sick, I mean, uh, feed the homeless and the poor? Didn't we uh, go visit the sick and them in prisons? And didn't we do all these wonderful works? We, you know, we prophesied in your name. He said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. Oh, woo! Saints, this is a hard one. They can do all the deeds and the sweet things and the good works. But that don't mean they know. And having a, a, a personal, intimate relationship with Yeshua. Woo! Pride, uttering hard things, working iniquity. Well, how do you know? Well, there should be fruit of the Spirit. All the fruit of the Spirit. Not just one, saints. So if you turn over to Galatians, okay, just turn to Galatians. Pope's like, what are you doing? I hear the pages turn. I don't know if I like that or not. I got to get her used to hearing the pages turn. If you look at Galatians uh, chapter 5, Verse 22, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Okay, so those are the fruits of the Spirit, and you are to judge the person by the fruit that they are producing. Love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So a worker of iniquity. Well, I'm doing all the works. I'm doing all the deeds. But there's no love. There's no kindness. Just like the church folks that are out doing the works. And they're advertising what church they're from. And they're talking about, you know, how many works they're doing. And they feed the homeless. And, you know, we come every this and that. And we come every so often or whatever. But if you listen to what's coming out of their pie hole when they're doing the work, it doesn't line up with the deed. Whatever the seed is, saints, will literally produce the deed. So if it's all about work and you're just doing something so that you look like, um, hey, we're doing the works, Jesus talks about that in Revelation, by the way. You might want to check that out. So we've got in Psalm 94, 10 sins of the wicked so that you can recognize them. Pride, uttering hard things, working iniquity. They boast of themselves, just like I just said. You've got folks out there doing the work, and they're boasting about it. Well, we go feed the homeless on the third Sunday. We go... Um, to the widows and the orphans the fourth Sunday. We can't get anybody to come on the first and second Sundays. People don't want to work. Blah, just complaining, complaining, complaining. Oh, well, this is taking too long. Another one, it's so hot out here. Well, if you're homeless, you're in the heat all the time.
time, but the church workers come out and complain about it. Just shut up, do the work, and thank God that you have air conditioning to go home to. Don't complain in front of a homeless man or woman that is so hot. What is wrong with us? But Jesus said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. Saints, if the love don't come through, the folks that are poor, they're going to take from you because they're going to take from you. It ain't going to matter at the end of the day if you're praising the Lord or praising the devil. They're going to take that food. They're going to take that water. They're going to take that money. So you're the one. You and I are the ones that are going to be left standing in front of Jesus saying, guess what? I fed the homeless. I went to the sick. I went to the prisoners. He's going to say, I'm not, I don't want to hear that. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. I'm talking, I'm talking hard stuff, but it's the truth. There's a difference when it's the truth. What about breaking God's people in pieces? When they're set out to destroy God's people, destroy God's people and get rid of them, that is not from God. The Word of God says that we are to hold one, one another accountable. There's a difference between saying, saints, you can't do that. Saints, you can't live like that. Saints, you can't treat people like that. That's not breaking God's people in pieces. That is saying, I'm admonishing you. I'm exhorting you. You might want to look up them two words so that you know what they actually mean. I'm calling people to repentance that belong to the Lord, saints. I'm calling all of us to repentance from dead works so that we can serve the most high God in truth. But the evil break people in pieces that belong to God and they afflict us. They don't want you to come and preach the truth. They don't want you to come and pray for people because they're false brethren. You will know them by their fruit. You will know them by what comes out of their mouth. Just because they're doing a good deed, me included, just because we're doing good deeds does not make us true followers of the Lord God Almighty. You're going to look at their fruit when they're mad, when they're upset, when they didn't get their paycheck, when their wife or their husband leaves or, or does something ugly and they want to divorce saints if you're a saint you are going to love and you are going to cover love covers a multitude of sins you're not going to break people in pieces you're going to try to build them up but you are also going to have enough sense to know that there are wheat and tares growing together and they some goats that look just like sheep and there are sheep that look like goats Number six, afflicting God's heritage. Well, it's the same thing. If you're afflicting God's heritage, you are afflicting them. You are keeping them from doing their work. Saints, we're supposed to all be on the same team. But Jesus said, I did not come to bring peace on this earth. I came to bring a sword of division and offense. That's this word, saints. They don't want to hear the truth. They want you to sugarcoat it. They want you to water it down so that it's easy to swallow and, and it comes on tickly ears. They don't want the truth. I don't care if you're a believer or a non-believer. The truth is the truth. How about slaying the widow and slaying the stranger? God help us in this country. God help us in our communities. God help us in our churches. Slaying the widow, slaying the fatherless. Saints, we're supposed to go to the widows and the orphans and serve them and help them, the true poor. The true poor that don't have the money and don't have the resources and are not cheating the government. Getting a check, living out in the open, and still taking all you can get. The true work of the church is to go to the orphan and the widow. <laughs> Woo! Break it down, sister, with a testimony. Make it plain. He said, you will have the poor with you always. Go take care of the poor. 
Well, I can't di differentiate between the poor and the rich. Well, yes, you can. The man that is poor is begging for something. They need something. They need the gospel. Okay, you can feed them all day long spiritually, and they may not get it, but they may. But you can feed them all day long physically and never say anything to them spiritually and they're going to take all they can get. This is how you know the ones that are spiritually and physically beggars and destitute. They'll listen to the word of God. They'll make a change. If you're still preaching to the same people that have made no change in their lives for 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50 years, they are not true followers of Yeshua. Wicked, wicked and perverse generation. The Word of God says you murder the fatherless. How many abortions have the wicked been a party to let me tell you what saint if you are a woman or a man and you have been a party to an abortion you need to repent and you need to ask God to forgive you and he in his mercy will forgive you but you'll have it till the day you die you'll have that memory but God will forgive murdering the fatherless. That ain't just about aborted babies. I can personally and honestly say that the enemy tried to come in and kill me as a baby. Saints, I'll be honest with you. There's a lot of illegitimate children out there. Spiritually speaking, if you are not a child of the Most High God, if you are not born again into the body of Christ, you're an illegitimate child of the devil. Physically speaking, my mother and father, I can honestly say they were adulterers, and I am a product of that. Illegitimate. After I was seven years old, they got married. As far as anyone in my family is concerned, I would get conked on top of my head with a ring from my uncle and I was called a bastard. That means illegitimate. And I started asking questions. And let me tell you what, I was angry. I was angry and full of resentment. But the Lord delivered me and I am no longer an illegitimate child of the devil and I am no longer an illegitimate child of a man and woman. I am a child of the Most High God. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And nothing or no one will stand before me all the days of my life. Say it. Say it out of your mouth and mean it. Stop playing with God and His people. Boasting. Number 10. Boasting that God does not see their wickedness. It's either the language of infidelity or insult. So we can continue to insult the Most High God and boast that He doesn't see and that He's not going to make recompense. But whatsoever a man sows, that so he shall also reap. I've got a testimony. I've got a testimony. And I'm going to tell you what that testimony is. I was dead in my sins and my transgressions and my God has quickened me and made me to live again. You want to know what wickedness is? Look in the mirror. Because the Word of God says in Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10, the heart is desperately wicked above all and who can know it except the Lord God Almighty? Look in the mirror, saint. You're calling on Jesus, then repent. Every single day, I'll tell you what, you've forgotten stuff that you've done. You don't even know about some of the stuff you've done. We need to stay in a place of humble adoration and thanksgiving to the Lord God Almighty, Yahuwah. And thank Him for not killing us and sending us to hell. And hell is a real place, saints. I'm forgiven. My testimony is simple. I'm forgiven. Forgiven. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I'm forgiven. And if you're forgiven, then you're going to start acting like you're forgiven. And you're going to start living like you're forgiven. And you're going to stop acting like you live in the world and that you're of the world. And you're going to reverence.
actually fear the Lord God Almighty and you're going to obey the living word. Saints, I know there's some great, amazing, fantastic, Holy Spirit filled people of God out there. And I know there's a lot of them that are struggling with their faith, with all that's going on. I want to encourage you today. If you've repented and you're living right, tell someone they need to get out of the system. And they need to live right and they need to call upon the name of the Lord. Go tell them your testimony. Tell them you were illegitimate. Tell them. Say, they're going to talk about you anyhow. Give them something to talk about. I got a testimony. Is sister with a testimony? On the Mount of Olives, God bless you, I love you, I plead and apply the blood of Yeshua Hamashiach over you to hide, protect, and keep you in all your ways. I bless you to be all that you can be. I bless you to fulfill your destiny. From the Mount of Olives, his sister with a testimony.